Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This session shall be absolutely heat free. For all our faculty and staff, all our students and your parents, it shall be a great year for all. God's word concerning you as more than a conqueror shall be established. In the name of Jesus. For it is faith that makes a believer more than a conqueror. Through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They stopped the mouth of lions. They quenched the furnace of the fiery furnace of fire. May everyone's faith come alive in a unique way this year. May we engage in what grows faith, and may our faith grow exceedingly. So as to remain on top of life situations and circumstances, so shall it be. Heavenly Father, speak to us again this morning, and let your name be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, and please, you may be comfortably seated. By privilege, um, I received a ministry of the word of faith from the Lord directly. I've been a baby of faith for long, but I never thought of ministry. It never crossed my mind. But one great day, I met him, and he met me. I don't know which one, but we met anyway. I saw humans wailing, sobbing, helplessly so, unstoppably so. I saw them tattered, battered, beaten. And the fire passed me, and I began to ask the Lord in that open vision. It was an open, I wasn't sleeping. Why, Lord, he said, but from the beginning it was not so. And now the hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith. And I'm sending you to undertake this task. It's never been edited. As raw well as I said it to you now, I received it about 41 years ago. It'll be 41 years in May. And that word has been blazing the trail by the one who gave it, backing up his word. So I have the privilege of uh, the vaccine of faith as a mandate from the Lord. It has seen several dead raised back to life by the backing of the one who gave the word. It has healed many established and curable cases. By God confirming his word, not by anybody's strength or skill. So I believe you are all receiving this morning a vaccine of faith that will guarantee your triumph, not just victory, your triumph over life situations and circumstances. The word says, thanks be to God, who always calls us to triumph always, triumph always in Christ Jesus. And makes known by us the sabbath of his knowledge in every place. It's one morning you will never forget in a hurry. Because something will drop into you today that will remain an asset for life. In the name of Jesus. How faith works. Let's first understand that faith is a weapon of war for victory in the believer's hand. 
whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And it overcomes by faith. First John 5, 4. One is born of God does not guarantee victory. He needs the weapon of faith at work to command victory. But every weapon requires the know-how to engage it or becomes dangerous to the holder. Men who are victims of their own weapons are not alive to tell the story. We can have an AK-7, AK-47 or something, and then somebody has a day gun. And use your, day, your AK-47 to kill you because you don't know how to operate it. You just carry it like this, collect it from your hand, shoot it at you. Because he didn't know how to use it. So it's not just holding a weapon, it is learning how to use it. And that's all the essence of military training. Anyone can sit in a tank, but can you operate it? They will pick him up from that tank and use the tank to grind him. Because he didn't know how to use it. One, we, mu we must get a hold of the weapon before we can start learning how to use it. You can't see it. You are not handling it. There's no way you can understand how to use it. So it has to be there. He said the word that we have heard, that we have seen, that our hands have handled. So faith must become handleable before training becomes relevant. I think that's clear enough illustration. For instance, we have different levels of faith. And this very simple to illustrate. We have different capacities of knife. There is table knife. There is kitchen knife. There is three felling knife. They call the cutlass here. Amen. And there is saw machine. And they are all engaged now in a three felling task. You can take the last. The table knife is the last. The kitchen knife is next. The bush cutlass is next. And then, of course, the saw machine is master. The man is even singing as he's cutting. And then the big roko tree he fell down. There are different levels. So faith is not faith. Faith is not faith. Little faith can handle little challenges. Great faith will, hire, will handle higher dimension of challenges. Very great faith will hire very, very high challenges. And then the spirit of faith at work. Challenges clear off on their own. They are different levels. They are weapons of the same class, but they have different capacities. We can't go about with little faith and expect to handle major challenges. We need to grow up. We need to grow up. Again, another illustration you have a toy gun is for jokes and fun. A day gun 
is for hunting after rats in the bush. And then a dig on for local farmers use for hunting. That is AK-47. That is Fulani bandits are using from government support. And there is machine gun. There are different levels. If you go through the news, you saw bandits were chased out of San Vara State. Who took over the government, sir? They chased local government chairmen out of their places. Four devils, their end has come. These gun powers belong to the same class, but they have differently rated capacities. The same thing with faith. The spirit of faith just steers the truth of your father in you. And then when you speak, it's your father speaking. Your father in heaven. So I don't care what to say. At that time, the spirit of your father will speak through you. You see a big, big, life-threatening situation. Peace! Because of the one speaking through you. They call that the spirit of faith. Praise God. They are all in levels. The ones I mentioned and I all belong to the same class of pulling the trigger at a target. That may be your enemy, but they are different. They have different classes of impact. Many, many believers are victims of non-growing faith. They just sit down at the same spot. Their level of command remains the same. Even little things they were handling before, they can't do anymore because of the great, greater challenges around them that is not responding. We need to grow our faith. Tango Landmark is also connected. Praise the Lord. So there's an evil I saw under the sun. I saw servants riding on horses and princes walking on foot as servants. What's the matter? In the break of an age, a serpent shall bite him. If the iron be blunt and you don't sharpen the edge, then you put in more strength. So let's sharpen up our faith. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Wisdom is profitable to direct. As our faith grows, our level of command grows too much. As our faith grows, our level of command grows too much. Get back on course, please. My system just stopped, so please get them to roll on, please. We can't grow our level of command without growing our level of faith. In the same vein, we have the faith 
different levels of faith. What they call measure of faith is a faith we engage for salvation. It's given that to every man, born again or born again. It's the only way you can get born again because you believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. So it's a measure of faith deposited into our human nature. You used to believe God or believe the devil. Whichever you choose. Use it that to believe in dignity or depravity. Use that to believe in the church of Christ or in the court of the devil. Everybody does what he believes in. Where did he get the belief from? Measure of faith. And then as we get our faith up in God, it grows to become little faith. And that's what we have there in Romans, uh, I mean Matthew 14, 31. Why are you so afraid? Oh, you're little faith. Little faith can't handle the storm. The storm was stronger than the faith he had. Little faith can't handle serious storm. When a tornado strikes in the place where it does, there are bunkers that are in the same region, in the same direction of the wind. People run into it for safety. Why? It's built to withstand the tornado. All facilities leveled, powerhouses, buildings. Ooh. And when they hear the sound, they run into the bunker. It's also a building with a terrific foundation and imbued strength to withstand it. Israel has a wave of a network of uh, bunkers uh, against these uh, enemies that keep attacking them over and over again. But you know something? There is no gang up of hell that can take that land from the seed of Abraham. It's a settled thing in heaven. When heaven said to something, you are just wasting your life trying to fight it. The bomb can reach it. So it's no bomb-like challenge that can reach a strongly built faith. Strongly, my God. So there are too many things that little faith can never handle. One can be an apostle, it doesn't matter. Your faith is not determined by your title. It's determined by your rate of growth. <laughs> you can have a word of faith ministry and be a blatant failure. It doesn't answer to your calling. It answers to growing it. My prayer is that each one here will be genuinely committed in growing their faith so as to gain higher command by the day of the challenges of life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Then we have great faith to confront and overcome great challenges that may line up on our path. I've never seen such great faith. No, not in Israel. Matthew 8.10 great faith to dare and bring down great challenges. And then we have very great faith. They call it trust. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be removed. Jesus couldn't put that woman off. No, I'm not sent to anyone else but the Lordship of Israel. But it's not proper to give the food of children and cast out to dogs. They say, sir, but dogs can also eat from the crumbs. I'm not moving here. I'm not moving from here. That is a raw interpretation of Psalm 25, 125 from verse 1 to 3. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be removed. They won't move. An eternal no. To defeat. 
They won't just move. They won't move. No matter what to do, they won't move. Now, that also interprets Daniel chapter 3. They cast four, three people into the fire and God delivered straight up Meshach and Abednego because it, they trusted, verse 28, they trusted in their God. Our God whom we serve will save us. He will deliver us uh, and we know he will. But even if he does not, we are not moving. Nebuchadnezzar keeps your harassment. We are moving nowhere. God is on our side and we are on his side. That's mountain moving faith. It's not casual walking on the street kind of faith. And all these levels are open to us for free if we will engage in what makes it happen. You will not be a prince walking on foot while servants are riding on horses by taking timely responsibility against the challenges that may line up on our path. You don't prepare for a march on the day of the march. No athlete prepares for a race on the day of the race. We do that in our part of the world. I mean, you just say, who are the people who are playing football when they were in school? Okay, we are going to China tomorrow. What's happening? You're a member of national <laughs> national team. You just get there. They ask him to go out. <laughs> because he can't play. It takes time to build muscles. A fat body doesn't, is not equal to a strong muscle. I mean, building your muscles is a specific task. You carry weights in the gym, and weight carries you. That thing you must not eat to build your muscles. They will deflate it. It's a lot of discipline to build strong faith. A lot of discipline. And then we have the Baba faith. The spirit of faith. You are seen as God sees. And you won't see anything else. You will say whatever God will say under all circumstances. And he speaks through you when you are pressurized. You can't be in 500 level until you are past 100 level, can you? So you start building from your measure of faith to little faith, 100 level. Amen. And then great faith, 200 level. And very great faith, 300. Let me add very, very great faith, 400. And you graduate into the school of faith, but graduate school of faith. You understand what I'm saying? That one is everlasting. It has no limit to its levels. That is 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 10,000. You will just be doing it. <laughs> like I'm trying to do today. You're a permanently registered student in the postgraduate school of faith. But not, not until you have crossed from the first degree level. In case you're only 500, then very, very great faith. You have spent one year more in learning how to be a professional. Amen. 
Now, the rate of growth is determined by individuals. He said, thy faith groweth exceedingly. Is determined by individuals, not by God, not by a pastor, not by an apostle, not by a prophet. First Thessalonians chapter one and verse three. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is made, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. The exceeding rate of growth. The things that people smile at, others are weeping. My God, my God, what's happening? It's little faith can handle it. Jesus said, why are you making noise? Why are you making so much noise? He's not dead. He's asleep. That's another range of faith. <laughs> they allowed it to go and just ignore them. Peter, James, and John follow me. All these Thomas and others, leave them behind. Hmm? Thomas will start touching other people when Jesus is praying. You think this man will wake up? <laughs> leave those fellows out. Amen. <laughs> These are the platforms to engage in your quest to grow your faith. First, you must be born again. That's number one. It's fundamental. You are not a candidate for overcoming the challenges of life until you are born again. That's why people seek other alternatives for victory in their journey in life. Because it's not your lot to be an overcomer until you are born again. Darkness cannot overcome darkness. And when you are born again, you are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Except you are asking darkness to help you reduce the torment of darkness. You are not an overcomer. Whatever is born of God only overcomes the world. And it overcomes by faith. Number two. Engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit. A master booster of faith. It's not the builder, it's the booster. Because faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Romans 10, 17. And the Holy Ghost is our master teacher. He's, he teaches us all things and brings all things to our remembrance as they may be required from time to time. All things. We need to engage his ministry, John 14, 26, in our quest to build our faith. In 1 Corinthians 2, 12, he said there are things that are freely given to us of God. We need to get to know them. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which was of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now, verse 13, we things we also teach. Not the words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we need to engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our quest to experience accelerated growth of faith. Number three, we must engage in the study of the world. Paul, the great apostle of faith, said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, the books that I left with you when I was Troas, when I was at Troas, when thou come or cometh, 
me enganou. The cloak that I left, my books, and especially my notes. Every man and woman of faith, of any worth, is a student of the world, an excited student of the world. Paul, the student of the world, was a giant of faith. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? I know him whom I believed. He found him. And I'm persuaded. What I have committed to him is kept. Unusual man of faith. Daniel, a man of unshakable faith. I, Daniel, understood through books. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 2. And God delivered Daniel from the den of lion because he believed in his God. Daniel 6 and verse 23. Great faith cannot be imparted. Very great faith cannot be wished. They are all raw products of growing insight in the word of God. I learned from the word God guaranteed future for success. For every believer, and I knew if I was selling pure water, I will be a great success. When I learned what it means to enjoy a married life, I knew if I were married to a devil, God would be surprised that he would be converted. Nothing puts us over the path of darkness than the power of light. And nobody does what you can see. That's the asset of revelation. Revelation is being able to see what God is saying. You can't doubt what you see. So when you study to the point of being able to see what God is saying on any particular subject of interest, forget it. Engage with the terms, believing God is committed eternally to bring it to pass. That's why no one grows in revelation, I mean in faith, without growing in revelation. No one grows in faith without growing in revelation. Paul said that now because of the abundance of revelation, my God, abundance. Not just catching the thing in the face. Abundance of revelation. Unusual things happen. So we say it cannot happen. Now, but we have seen it happen over and again. Your campus came alive from a forest in seven months. With road, water, Two halls of residence, faculty building. We have been in building for some time. All between March 6 and October 21. We are actually living in a faith environment. So to be faithless here is not correct. It's not correct. The faith tabernacle came to light in one year. From the day it was said, today it was dedicated. One year. We have been in building and divorce before. No, not this kind. We are all smiling around and it's not fake. It's real. There is no tension. There is no temperature. And yet, the largest roof structure on this earth as of today is going on there. The cost of the roof is several times the entire faith tabernacle. Not two times. I say several. I won't tell you how many times. The cost of the roof alone. We don't steal. We don't take bank overdraft. We never negotiate with the bank to spend money. The faith that works. Learn how it works. And you never lose your worth. Learn how it works. And yet you come to church. It's not even for me in CU Chapel. There's no announcement of project. There's no prayer of project. There's nothing. My God. 
but there is faith that puts God on duty. This is the difference. Anybody may attend to success through struggles and sweat. You want to struggle and sweat to keep it on. But when you engage God's hand, you are smiling. You are restful. You are engaging with delight. Thank you, Jesus. Your lives shall be tension free. Amen. Young people, your future shall be tension free. Amen. You will not know the meaning of depression Amen. or frustration. Amen. As you build your faith today against the battles of tomorrow. Build your faith today against the battles of tomorrow. I meet the under level people here sometimes, I mean, and then I'll bring you bits of my library books while I was still secondary school. The things I was privileged to read. I'll show you my notes of when I left and my journey in life. The things I was learning from Jesus. I learned not to touch anybody's thing when I was 20. By myself, I was reading the book of Jeremiah. I read all those strange books. As the ostrich lays eggs and hatches them not, so it's a man that gets riches and not by right. He shall lose it in the midst of his days, and at the end, he shall be a fool. I was 20 years old. God is not late. I was baptized with the grace of meekness. 1970. I was 16. There's a lot of a night job, so you better start now before the evil days come when you will say I have no interest in them. Anybody at any stage can get committed to building his faith. It goes beyond success in school. It covers success in life. It guarantees eternity in grand styles. Not a fake church member, a fake church active person, but someone walking with Jesus. And we walk by faith and not by sight. So the stronger our faith, the more qualitative our work with God. He never lies. Now, thanksgiving and praise that grants access to God's presence for the required inspiration on the strategies to engage in conquering any seemingly impossible challenges of life. Thanksgiving and praise brings us to his presence where he shows us the path of life. His presence is the booster of our inspiration. The master booster. Lord, there must be a way out. Our daughter is dying. They say, the system is broken down doctor said. But I know there's always a way out. With a heart of worship and praise. I worship you, almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace, that is all I've come to do. I'll give you praise, for you are my righteousness. Light strong. Bow, 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 fall. You can't be reminded of what you have not learned. And so the Holy Ghost is not a dummy. You are lamb first. When you are needed, he brings it out. Without you saying, God, you know, I'm a pastor, I'm a prophet, you called me, prove that you called me. If he doesn't prove it, then he's no longer God. Go and remove him. It is not 
on spiritual to be challenged. Highly spiritual people do get challenged. They face challenges. But it's anti-covenant to be defeated. So get your part of the deal done. Build your faith and damn the devil. Somebody's told is changing. My prayer is that this session will be a brand new one for you. I prepare this lecture for this service. I've, ne I've never used any of these illustrations before in my 40 years plus of teaching. If the only student here was going to bring a table knife, a kitchen knife, and a cutlass, <laughs> but let some people run away and say, what's happening? <laughs> Amen. I mustn't find you anywhere else but the top. In your head, the top. For faculty and staff, in your family, the top. For students in your studies, the top. By settling down, to build your faith against the challenges you may be facing. Now let's go to round up. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen in the lives of believers. How? With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Matthew, I mean, Mark 9, 23, or Mark 10, 27 is the first one I said. Then Mark 9, 23, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You put the two together. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen in anyone's life. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen in anyone's life. Whatever God can do, faith can make happen in any life. My prayer is that we come awake to the need to take responsibility in growing our faith. When you want to buy planks, you go to the plank market. You want to buy um, furniture, you go to the furniture market. You don't go shopping for furniture in a vegetable market. You won't find. They'll be laughing at you. You say, excuse me, do you have furniture? Say, Did you see furniture here? Do they put it in the pocket? <laughs> you get insulted for going to the wrong place for anything in the market. You want faith? Go after proven faith authors. Go after faith proven ministers. Nobody can give what he does not have. You don't want faith and you are studying his eschatology. The time Jesus will come, how many people will meet him? How many people will not be allowed to meet him? How many will go to another city? How many? Uh, that's not where to learn faith. That's where to study prophecy. This one faith is available on the earth. There are, he said the word of faith which we preach. So there are those sent to preach the word of faith. Go for them. Kenneth Higgins said, I read all that I ever found about Smith Wigglesworth until something from him rubbed in on me. He was his master resource in building his faith. And I can tell you today, faith is my master source in building my faith. I read all he ever wrote until I got that prophetic mantle from him that put me on course with my calling. Amen. Go after that. Don't be searching for material on prosperity and be reading materials that are anti-prosperity. You don't give anything. God has given you all things. Why the earth remained, see time and harvest shall not cease. Again, my prayer is that no one will misinvest his energy 
or go after raw materials. Um, Charles Darwin, who caused the world a lot of problems by his uh, dangerous evolution theory. He was simply a seminary student, but he got a wrong book that pumped a wrong thing to his life. And what a damage he did to many, many believers in his generation. From a book, a wrong book. Until some faith came and leveled out those nonsense. It won't cause your word problem. Build your faith by the word of God, word of life. I mean, ever current, eternally current. No civilization will render the word of God. No, no, void. It lives and abides forever. Its integrity is unshakable. It's eternal. Let's get together for it. When I started counting, I've used 30 Bibles in my short life. 33, sorry. And when I say I used, that means I've marked some things that I can't even see what was in it anymore. You can't grow your faith wishing. You can't grow your faith waiting. You grow your faith walking. Faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. And so those who understand it, they want to communicate with us. And through their light, we see light. Psalm 36 and verse 9. That are the fountain of life. And through thy light shall we see light. Amen. Your future is settled. Amen. Not just for victory, not just for triumph, but to operate in the realm of more than a conqueror. Amen. That will be your experience. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Now give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Amen. No assumption. There are some people in this place that are not sure of their salvation yet. They were born in church. I mean, that's because their parents are believers. But your parents and you have different days of birth. It's not transferable. They can't say, what's your age? You don't mention the age of your father. They say, you? When were you born? You mentioned the date he was born. I think we have a problem here. <laughs> you are not sure of your salvation. Nothing has changed. And you want to say, Jesus, save my soul. I want to experience the reality of salvation. I don't want to fake my life. It's too precious to be wasted. Save me, Jesus. Forgive my sins. Make me a new creature. I want to live a common life also and make heaven at the end of my journey. Wherever you are, you would like me to pray that prayer with you. Please stand to your feet. And I will pray with you in a moment. Jesus, save me. Forgive me my sins. Stand to your feet wherever you are. It's an opportunity for a change of story. God bless you. You are standing, standing properly. Stand properly. I'll be praying with you in a moment. And Jesus will save your soul. Amen. There are also people here today who need to rededicate their lives to Christ. I mean, uh, it's been over and on and over and on and over and on. Jesus, I want to be established in the faith. I want to be a registered member of your household. Wherever you are, also stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. This is the most fertile season of your life. Don't allow evil seeds to have root in your life. It can be too costly. 
you are there, you'd like to return to Jesus today, please stand to your feet. Amen. If anyone is standing for any of the calls, please make your way down here. Quickly, if you are standing for any of the calls, make your way down here. Jesus loves you. Beyond all you can think or imagine. Keep coming. Jesus saved my soul. Restore me back to the faith. Thank you, Jesus. Please bow your head for prayer. Lift up your right hand and pray this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. I now proclaim you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Keep your right hand up as I pray. Lord Jesus, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them forth. Let the same grace preserve them. Today will be a day to much remembered in your life. You'll never get off the back of Christ anymore. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please walk this way with them. Shall we all rise to our feet? Give the Lord one more time a big hand of praise. If you don't want to live a defeatist life, let me recommend to you some um, kindergarten level books of faith. Get hold of the law of faith that I wrote, the miracle seed. As you comprehend that, move forward and read experts of faith. As that sinks into you, then move forward to understanding the unlimited power of faith. You'll be surprised at where your faith gets to by the end of this session. Can I hear your amen? amen. There are other very powerful books of faith. Many great authors of faith with proofs in our country and outside. Get rid of them and read. There is no appetite in knowledge. There is no appetite in knowledge. White people taught me the bits I knew in the school of faith. I registered in the school of faith of Higgin, of T.L. Osborne, of Copeland, of Ola Robert, Schambach, Smith Wigglesworth. I just registered around to find what is missing in this, that this one is supplying. So I can live my life well. I can make a list of 20, 30, 40 authors that bless my soul. Start working before it becomes too late. I can't be a pilot anymore. It's late. They don't take people of my young age. They can't trust people's lives to me while I'm thinking of uh, uh, how the churches are doing, how the pastors are doing. You just drive to somewhere else and then you don't wear your own until the foyer finish. <laughs> Amen. Now, none of the faculty here can, uh, is eligible to be an astronaut. You are past the age. When they look at you, they see that you will be a risk. If you go to space, you may not return. <laughs> By the time you start floating, you'll be <laughs> So they take young people that don't have any concern anywhere. They say, hey, my wife, my wife, my wife. Your wife is on the ground, you are in space. So anything you want to do, do it. <laughs> if you write your will there, you can't land here. 
So except to return by yourself. Praise God. Before this prime age of your life is gone, sow good seed of the word of life into it. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks. The session is declared a great one for every one of us. Amen. Full of triumphs. Amen. Each one becoming more than a conqueror. Amen. No more defeat. Amen. No more failure. Amen. No more going in cycles. Amen. In our various endeavors as faculty, unusual breakthroughs. Amen. In our research efforts, unusual breakthroughs. Amen. All of our faculty and staff, unusual breakthroughs this year. Amen. And all of our students, I release upon you the spirit of excellence. Amen. The struggles in any area of your studies is over today. Amen. No one's parents will waste their resources on them. Amen. No one here will be a heartache source for their parents. Amen. No one will miss their steps as to be rusticated from this university. Amen. This session shall be great for you. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Lift up those two hands and give God thanks.